Well, hello there! Welcome to the 1920s. We're gonna solve a problem involving mean. And I don't mean mean, I mean mean. The average. We're not gonna use a calculator or some computer gadgets or wizards. We're gonna use plain old gym socks. Yeah, you heard of me. Gym socks. Here is the mean sock problem. How does that sock problem work? Well, I'm gonna let Mr. Phillips explain it to you. Hi, Mr. Phillips here, and I'm going to explain to you how the mean sock problem works. Now, obviously, we have this big pile of socks, and every container has a designated number to go along with the socks. Now, obviously, the first bucket has six, the second bucket has three, third bucket has zero. Um, fourth bucket has two and the last bucket has four the way I want you to think about this is think about every bucket being somebody's container Okay, so every person has a certain number of socks So this data we are collecting tells us that one person has six three zero two and four So we have five different people with five different values of socks We have to understand that first to understand how the mean problem is demonstrated in this video now obviously I go to sleep here and something bad happens um, my dog Oakley comes and she takes all of everything and just tears it up and moves it around and, and acts like her ornery self. So as I'm getting ready to wake up here, I'm left with a dilemma. The dilemma I'm left with is that I have no data left to look at. I have no numbers. All I have is a big pile of socks and I'm really scared, obviously there. Okay, so what I have to do first is get everything kind of organized. And one of the first things I do is I organize all the socks into one big pile. So I take all those that data that I got and put it in one big group. And I just add it all together and have one big number. Then what I do is I divide it um, evenly among the five different groups here. So I take it one at a time and just divide it into different groups. So I'm putting them in one, one, one. The one thing to notice is originally that middle bucket had zero. It had zero to it, but now I'm, I'm going to keep adding to that because I'm putting it in one at a time because I know if I just give them out evenly, I will be able to find the data value that's the mean. Okay, the, the mean obviously means average. So if we look at this here, and I was going to put them all in different containers one at a time, I'd be left with all the groups having three apiece, which would be my mean. Another great example to talk about mean is talking about houses. Now inside the houses, let's talk about the average of kids that live per house. Now here's our data. We have um, six in one house, seven in one house, two, zero, one, 
and so on and so forth. This is very similar to our buckets. Now in this case, instead of it being buckets, it's houses, and instead of it being socks, it's children. So let's imagine that all these kids want to come out and they want to play in the streets. So they all leave their houses and they all join together in the street. Now, um, this is like in our video when we take all of the socks and my dog Oakley comes around and takes all the socks and just tears them up and puts them into one big group. So we take them all away from their data. And we put them all in one big group together. And then what we would do to find the average of children per household is we put them into the house one at a time. And we just keep on doing that until every house is completely full with the exact same amount of children. So we take that total number and we divide it evenly into the amount of groups of houses that we have. In the same way that we took the total number of socks and divided it evenly among the five different buckets. A census that took place during the year 2000 says that it has 1.86 children per household. Now this is kind of an interesting stat because a lot of times the first thing we think of is how can you have 1.86 of children? Let's take Jimmy and Sally for example. Two average children, it makes sense, the number two, we have two children, but how can we have 1.86 children? Do we have a bunch of children walking around with no head? Oh no, Jimmy, where'd your head go? Don't worry, Jimmy didn't lose his head. When we have 1.86 or 1 and 86 hundredths of children per household, that really means that we have in between one child and two children per household. If you look at these houses, some houses have six, some have seven, one has two, zero, one. Just because an average is two doesn't mean that some can't have more and some can't have less. And it even doesn't mean that some cannot have any children at all. So let's conclude with solving a problem with actual numbers. We first have five, six, three, two, zero, eight. I have six different numbers. The first thing I need to do is add them all into one big group. So if I add five plus six plus three plus two plus zero plus eight, I get 24. Then I need to take that number 24, my total number, and divide it evenly among the six different groups. So 24 divided by six, I then get a mean, an average of four.